Welcome back to channel 37. Today we're at Dutch Modular Day, which is located in this old mental institution. I'm really hoping that Casper doesn't lock me up here and throw in the key. But for now, let's go talk to some of the makers. Welcome back to channel 37. Today we are here at the Dutch Modular Festival and I'm speaking with Making Sound Machines, Roland and Enrica. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So. I know you guys uh, from your channel, but you are also musicians, composers, now engineers of your own uh, your own synth. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing here and what you're showing? Yeah, uh, that's right. So um, we basically come from a music background, like uh, playing oh, playing uh, classical instruments from being very tiny. I think I started with guitar at six. Wow. And then Rika started with cello. Yeah, oh no, actually I started with uh, the recorder. With the recorder? Wow. And I was like, like the, the, co the coolest instrument. Do you still have some Vivaldi in your fingers? <laughs> no, no, okay. no. Gotcha. Uh, I, I switched then to cello mm -hmm. and uh, I studied audio engineering. Okay. So to combine basically the music part with the technical side. Yeah. Uh, which is great for building modules because you need both. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Roland is a double bass player. Yeah, yeah. So I started with guitar and then at some point I really got into making music with trackers and mm -hmm. that always went along with studying a classical instrument, like learning technique, but then uh, doing weird things, recording guitars and chopping stuff up and then doing some little effects, effects on them and uh, rearranging stuff and that led into playing bass and mm -hmm. then I thought man I could really study study bass right and I learned double bass yeah uh, at the age of 16 which is quite late it's very for, late for, for classical musician classical musician yeah and I um, practiced my butt off and yeah. then uh, got accepted into music school and I was like well you know this is great like uh, so the computer has been invented and there's all these new opportunities. And then I was in this uh, institution where everybody was like, oh, please don't do a computer. Shut uh, it. Shut to, it. <laughs> <laughs> computer is the thing you turn off. Yeah. The <laughs> um, idiot box, yeah. as my father calls it. It's and terrible. so, yeah, we were, I mean, literally, in, in, uh, we were prohibited uh, to use tape in um, our, our recitals that were graded, basically. So the okay. way it was that it was that uh, weird and so, so strict, and rigid. Yeah, so this is rebellion. What you're doing now? Sort of, sort okay. of. Because uh, at I don't know at the halfway point, I was like, okay, I really want to keep doing the electronic part, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll finish my studies real quick. Mm -hmm. And so after six years, I finally had my diploma and yeah. went into um, went into pop music and video production, and that's where we met. Yeah. And Enrica did the engineer part with all the maths and all the electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Physics and, and all the, the hard subjects. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And I was like, maths, who am I kidding? Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I don't know, we started out uh, building mutable instrument kits because mm -hmm. we wanted to do stuff with filters and then there were these kids out there and then we had a workshop with Bustle okay. who were at that time still called Standuino okay. and that really sparked an interest in building the noise box that squeaked the loudest okay. <laughs> you know and Enrique had some idea about the you know the cello bow thing yeah, yeah. yeah my first project I never finished was to put something on the bow Mm -hmm. which gives out MIDI or some signal mm -hmm. and control with your movement some sounds uh, to find out ways to control music other than the traditional ways are always mm -hmm. very interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. From there, we sort of ventured into building modules to build our modules off of it. Sort of the, the idea was sort of, okay, if you're interested in a filter, but for a filter to do something, you need an envelope and mm -hmm. 
the VCO, mm -hmm. then the best idea would be to build a VCO mm -hmm. and then uh, build a VCA of that is already maybe like a proof working design okay. and then build your little idea in the middle and then mm -hmm. check out how that works, how that works with something that's maybe well developed already mm -hmm. and um, not not have to jump through all those hoops to uh, to design the part in the middle basically yeah so that was kind of the idea and of course like how it always goes with modular it spiraled into building 200 plus diy modules right yeah okay. <laughs> so there was another... do you have a, a graveyard somewhere in your house uh we... Yeah, we have a pile of not used modules okay which yeah. Build. yeah yeah and we have a hall of shame <laughs> like a little failures you like a failures little, uh, a little box the with uh, stuff in it that uh we built but didn't work one way or another. We started out building a lot of Befaku uh, modules because they're very nice designs Befaku, and they, yeah. Yeah, they're very clearly laid out. Mm -hmm. um, and the instructions are just awesome. Yeah. Um, and it also guides you through, okay, which parts do you have to watch out for polarity or mm -hmm. which parts do you have to build first so they're not in the way of other parts that yeah. you don't get to finish the thing right mm -hmm. and so the success rate was quite good which okay. is uh, which is it's encouraging it's, it's important it's great yeah. in the beginning yeah. i'm totally i'm totally honest if the first thing you build fails then to get over the hurdle to do the second thing is yeah like, you're seeing the pain yeah. in your wallet and, <laughs> and then it just becomes yeah very yeah. discouraging yeah. but so if i understand correctly uh so you were like when you were first starting your diy journey you already were thinking like about the mechanics, okay, how can I learn this to build my own ideas? Was that yeah. part of the process for you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. It was in the back of our minds, yeah. basically, to mm -hmm. get started. Yeah. And at some point, go into own designs. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, for example, one, one very practical, one very practical thing was like, so we build a microphony, yeah. right? And then we were like, okay, this is really awesome and you make a little cable and you make a little piezo in the end and you get i don't know you can get uh, 10 piezos for five euros or whatever mm -hmm. and it's really fun oh you can i don't know stick them to everything and make like surfaces and send them into eurek effects and yeah curves and uh cloud them i don't know mm -hmm. like the rings them like yeah. the stuff yeah, you would do yeah. Yeah. and nice. um then we were like okay but now we want 16 of them. Do we really order 16 microphones? Mm -hmm. Or do we look into how that is built? Maybe we can leave out stuff, which mm -hmm. is hard with microphony. Yeah. But maybe we can leave out stuff or change stuff in the design, give it more gain, do, adjust the sounds. And we, uh, we, I don't know, followed this path down looking at circuits and of course looking at the open source designs out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then trying to adjust to what we needed. And I, one thing that came out of that was an eight channel version of the um, of the 1000 dB basically. Okay. So yeah. you could just plug in a lot of things and then uh, preempt them. And mm -hmm. then we did a big, we did a big um, installation at Reading Fringe Festival. Mm -hmm. they, they invited us and said, here's a little money, make a fun project. Yeah. And so we built like a huge table of objects and people could just come in and uh, mm -hmm. they play with that. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun because we had people coming in at 10 and then at, 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 at one in the afternoon, they were like, okay, so I told my wife I'd just be out and checking this thing real quick and then come come back with the croissants. <laughs> but now I realize I've been here for three hours. Oh no. So you're breaking <laughs> up marriages, I hear. <laughs> People came back bringing their kids, yeah. which was super fun. And mm -hmm. then, we, I don't know, it was in a church and we made this amazing cacophony rockers. Mm -hmm. Everybody was playing with some and the natural resonance yeah, yeah, yeah. is crazy okay so, so that was really fun mm -hmm. and um i don't know on, on the it's always like on on one idea on the back of one idea you develop the next idea yeah right? exactly so enrica proposed a cv recorder <laughs> and the CV, cv recorder was like you know what with those cv things you could probably do like a drum sequencer that can do 
algorithm or yeah. some interesting groove stuff that we um, would really like to not program by hand anymore. And all of a sudden, you have a very weird interface with a very fun piece of code on it. Mm -hmm. And then you get into, okay, this could be something if it wasn't that awkward to dial in and if you actually could see what the hell you were doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is the, the first uh, beginnings of your new module. I saw this incredible um, drum synth that you're working on. Could yes. you tell us a bit more about that? Okay, yeah, so the module we're here with, yeah, and that has literally just come out, uh, is Stolperbeats. Stolperbeats. Stolperbeats is German for beats tripping over themselves. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, like a, a, a beat with a little limp or yeah. a beat with a little, uh, uh, with a drummer that's a, getting a little drunk. That sounds great. <laughs> and uh, the idea behind that really is that there is a lot of beats in, for example, hip hop music that are not on the grid. Like there are 4-4 four, four beats yeah. in, in terms of the notes, mm -hmm. right? But... Uh, the snare is a little earlier, and the kick's a little lazy, and then the hi-hats do a little uh, lilting pattern. Like a little bit of swing, which is so yeah. hard to translate yeah. into the synth world. It's, it's yeah. very unnatural most of the time. It, yeah. Exactly, and um, I think a lot of the way uh, sequencers are still has to do with the way they were when Kraftwerk first used their first Dupre thing, or, you know, yeah. something mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. um, so interestingly, like the whole concept of taking real human groove mm -hmm. and then putting it into electronic music, that comes from hip hop, sampling like a funk drummer, mm -hmm. then cutting up the beat, mm -hmm. and then putting it on an MPC, making it even funkier. Like, yeah. I don't know, making early snares or, you know, shifting stuff around. And then came, of course, like the live bands, like The Roots, or, yeah. you know, um, uh, people that really wanted to incorporate that into live shows for Erika Badu. Or yeah. they had She's an a, excellent example. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. had a Jay Dilla beat for an Erika mm -hmm. Badu piece, but they needed to play it live. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, how do we know that we want to, I don't know, play on play at the same time and so the concept evolved of having tuplets like mm -hmm. quintuplets yeah. and then putting 16th notes on those quintuplets and so that basically what uh, the the core of Stolper Beats does it, it redistributes a pattern that you um, input very classically on mm -hmm. the 16th grid yeah but it gets redistributed uh, onto like a, a shuffling Pattern. Okay. And you're the engineer, right? So how did you start to conceptualize how you could actually make this come to fruition? Um, so we had, uh, I built a module that was Arduino based. Okay. Like the Arduino um, prototype platform. Yep. Um, and we, we built basically like a, yeah, like a shield for the Arduino, mm -hmm. which you, which gave you hero rack controls and tracks. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I built it for another purpose. It, uh, the, the purpose was to, um, yeah, basically record CV mm -hmm. and play them back on motors. Okay. So like solenoids or even um, rotary motors. So you could okay. record the potentiometer okay. and it would be played back. Okay. And but then uh, we were like, ah, it can give out triggers also. Yeah, and also, so the thing about it was, and that's a really cool thing, that was a really nice universal design, right? Mm -hmm. It had yeah. a CD input at the top, then a knob for attenuating mm -hmm. below it, then a button with the RGB LED to show modes, mm -hmm. like record play, I don't know, manipulate or yeah. something, and then another button at the bottom um, that showed you like a or like a little led that showed you like what cv came out of the jack yeah, yeah. and so in a way it was a fantastic universal module right mm -hmm. it's it had uh, four lanes of stuff you can do and then running on one chip they could interact somehow and then um i don't know we were drawn into this I don't know, sometimes you go off on these tangents and then you watch a lot, lot of drum tutorials and all of a sudden it's about uh, how you play 
J. Dilla beats, right? Yeah. And then uh, we were like, oh, we have this module. We can do a little algorithm and yeah, tying these like practical application. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pull that's that into great. into what uh, into Euro Yeah. Right? And so that's uh, that turned out a fantastic design philosophy mm -hmm. because uh, we do now build these big modules that are almost like uh, 84 HP. Yeah. And I guess they would be incredibly expensive to sell because mm -hmm. they're really, I don't know, they have like everything. They have four audio channel and then 12 CV channels and switchable uh, ranges and uh, LEDs for everything. You have immediate feedback on what's going in and then 12 CV outs and four audio outs. So a lot of stuff and encoders everywhere, right? Yeah. And so what we kind of do is like a sort of subtractive design okay. that we um, program an idea mm -hmm. and if we don't need all 12 CDNs, that's fine. But if yeah. we need another one, it's just there. Yeah. And you don't prohibit yourself from allowing another CDN okay. just because your initial design doesn't allow it. Mm -hmm. There's this trap you can fall in that when you design something um, that is already a thing, mm -hmm. you very quickly accept this thingness. Like mm. you don't look you look at the standard. You, you don't look at a tree and say, oh, this should be different. Yeah. Because it's a thing. Right? It's what is. Yeah, it's, you're not yeah. questioning and so much. So, and this, that's an incredible trap that you can fall in while designing. Yeah. Because first of all, you need to find out what it is. And then you need to give it a control surface or yeah. a, a user interface. Exactly. And it's really interesting because that is like a process of at least two weeks mm -hmm. before you make the first one. Yeah. And then like a really long time of developing like, yeah. uh, finding out oh how does this behave and maybe this should be different yeah and yeah. Um, we, we talk a lot about that like yeah. should it have more knobs should it have more jacks and so on yeah and then Roland sits down and with photoshop and tweaks the design and puts the elements everywhere yeah. And um, if you're happy, you're okay. I give you now the picture, mm -hmm. and then I take the picture and um, put it in my CAD for the electric circuit. Yeah, and then of course also a lot of practical things start to pop up. Oh yeah. Where maybe the ele I don't know the jacks are big bigger than you thought or something like this. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also a way of starting. For example, so that's where the DIY thing is super super important you take you look at the stuff you have in the euro rack yeah and you say okay this spacing this this is kind of good yeah right and then you pull in a picture of that and you start to space the the elements accordingly mm -hmm. so you kind of have an idea that it will work yeah it's not totally into the blue yeah and uh, but still it's sort of like a uh, subtractive design from the the one that has everything mm -hmm. and you cancel out everything that you don't really need yeah and there's always one really amazing thing that you have to kill mm -hmm. because it's not the thing that's needed yeah right it's like the coco chanel philosophy like take off the last accessory that you just put on yeah it's, yeah trimming away the fat yeah yeah uh, and well another thing um because there was some discussion about uh, like graphics, mm -hmm. is the idea behind the graphics is really, um, well, you let the thing find its own form, mm -hmm. or the form of the thing shouldn't be in the way of the functionality. Exactly. Uh, which is, I don't know, it's, it's like the, it's an, an old hat, right? It's mm -hmm. the Bauhaus thing. Yeah. But then you go and look at examples that facilitate what you want to do. For example, um, uh, you you really want to guide someone through a complex system, yeah. which which is your right, basically. Yeah. And so you start to look at um, the design of the Swiss railroad, or which has really amazing signage and really clear fonts, and yeah. the icons are really good. And mm -hmm. you find out, oh, that's all made by Josef Müller Brockmann, who is a design pioneer. And mm -hmm. Uh, you follow that path and get into subway design or so, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that where really the iconography has not more than you need to lead um, to lead people to the 
exit they want to take, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it's still, even though it's extremely functional, it manages to be very aesthetic. Like, I don't know if you know the artist Yayoi Kusama, mm -hmm. with all the dots everywhere. It's I feel like it's one yeah. of her one of her oh, installations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah really it's like also it. some of the work in the end is just where you, I don't know, change the labels mm -hmm. because I don't know. I really, I, I really don't like the idea of having that many abbreviations yeah. on, a, um, on a module because I remember the first time I looked at a synthesizer and it says a, ADSR, mm -hmm. and to the very first timer, this doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Like, oh, what's that supposed to be? Yeah. And uh, I guess now you can Google it. Mm -hmm. there, there were times where you couldn't Google it, or there's just always this one thing you don't know, and I think. The, like the idea for an instrument is uh, it should always be as easy as possible to get something out of it. Yeah, not to get in the way of itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah I completely and, agree. And it's really interesting because people talk about like, oh, this electronic music instrument is really, uh, is really intuitive. Mm -hmm. And I can think of very few electronic instruments that are really intuitive in a way that a piano is intuitive. I like, completely agree. <laughs> yeah. Or a drum. Yeah. The most intuitive. Yeah, the most hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Hit it with but, a stick. Yeah. But you know that an instrument is intuitive when a small child like walks up to the piano, hangs on the keys and it does make a sound. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so th then already then you already you have 90% of the intended usage. Yeah. And the I don't know, like the virtuosity mm -hmm. is just stacking skills on top of Mm -hmm. This very simple interface, like any other instrument. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and I think so. I think with electronic instruments, there's a lot of stuff that facilitates easier use, like arpeggiators or sequencers. But those are in themselves complicated, and to make them easier is, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a goal, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's such a unique module and you talk a lot about its functionality. So I'm wondering, how would you like a user to interact with it? Do you have any specific vision or hopes for how someone would use it? Um, well, so so I guess my, my idea would be that uh, if you have the very basic sound, mm -hmm. like, okay, you know it's a sequencer, you connect it to a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, mm -hmm. um, and you press play, then you already get something nice out of it, mm -hmm. and then you're encouraged to tweak the stuff. But like the very, the first layer is really easy. Right? Yeah. You have uh, some sequences, you can mute them and unmute them, and you get something useful out of it, um, even if you don't dive in super deep. And yeah. if you want to dive in, uh, you could do all kinds of stuff, uh, even like notate out patterns and play along. Yeah. Oh, I would love that because you know my my mind really works in this way. And yeah. yeah. Please but um, yeah, I love that um, it's very immediate. Yeah. All the stuff that it's obvious is labeled. Mm -hmm. You play around and tweak as long as you want. Yeah. Um, and if you stop there, it's fine. But if you want, you can deep dive and find out even more mm -hmm. more features that are there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Seems like it has a lot of opportunities for live performance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah also yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. We Definitely. have the, the live mutes mm -hmm. and the dialing in of patterns. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, of course, also like the base for, um, for our own live sets, yeah. our mm -hmm. own idea about how to do a live set. Very cool. Thank yeah. you so much for, for sharing your experience and yeah. a bit of your background with us. It was really, really nice to speak with you guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having us. So uh, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube or on our website. Yes, the Instagram is making sound machines in one word. The YouTube is making sound machines in one word. Um, and uh, we have a website, of course, where you can find out all about our modules videos and tutorials and uh, manuals and stuff like that. Making soundmachines.com. Yes. <laughs> Do you play, you studied like classical bassoon? Isn't that yeah, weird? I have a degree a, in that. He yeah, is a con I have a degree in uh, classical double bass. Are you serious? Yes. So how did you end up, you know, being successful now you after such a degree? <laughs>